Hello everyone. This video demonstrates installation and overview of the Open SDN controller. We are constantly enhancing our UI, so please feel free to provide us feedback using the community forum pages. Today, the Open SDN controller is available as an OVA or VMDK and can be installed on VMware or VirtualBox. We will continuously expand on our installation option list. In this video, I will import the Open SDN OVA on VMware Fusion running on my laptop. Let me label this Open SDN Controller. And import the virtual machine. Let's look at the default configuration option for the Open SDN Controller. 16 gig of memory, highly recommended in the production environment, a single network adapter, and two CPU cores. I will customize this VMware a little bit so that I can run it my, on my laptop. I'm going to reduce the memory to 8 gig or around 8 gig. And I'm going to have my network adapter share with my Mac so that I can get the native IP address. With that, uh, let me start my virtual machine. Login as admin and default password Cisco. And uh, it drops into the SDN controller, open SDN controller OS configuration console. The network settings allow you to configure the ETH0 interface, the primary name server, and uh, the host name for the OVA. The system management allows the capability to do shutdown and reboot the system. And apply configuration allows to ap apply the configuration. I'm not going to customize my OVA. I'll use the default configuration. And uh, the drop to shell command al allows you to go to the shell. I will check quickly check the IP address provided by my NAT so that I can log into the OVA and start, uh, start the configuration. Using the Open SDN Controller IP address, I can log into the Open SDN Controller UI that allows me to configure the Open SDN Controller. In phase one, the Open SDN Controller supports a single node or a three node cluster configuration, and in future will allow customized cluster size. The three node cluster configuration checks for reachability uh, before proceeding with the cluster member configuration. As you can see, I don't have 151 configured, so I get an error unreachable address. I will use a single node configuration for my laptop. The cluster configuration pushes the configuration to all the cluster members. It also starts the controller, the log aggregator, the matrix, and the monitor manager, and base applications bundled with the controller on all the cluster members. It provides a single UI view for all the cluster members. The cluster has been configured successfully, and all the services uh, started on all cluster members. So we are ready to log into the UI and start using the controller. The controller supports two roles, admin and user, and users can be assigned to one of these roles. I'm going to skip user creation and continue logging into the UI. By default, we have an admin user, admin, admin. And I'm going to log into the Open SDN controller using that username and password. I'm switching to a three node cluster configuration to demo the UI capabilities. In I have a three node cluster consisting of 126, 55, 56, and 57. In the three node cluster configuration, you can log into the UI using the IP address of any of the cluster member. So currently I'm logged into 55, I can also log into 56 for an identical view or 57. An admin user can manage the system, monitor the system, and use the application. In this video, I will briefly walk through the system management and the system monitoring. The applications will be covered in the separate video. Under system management, an admin user can install or uninstall features in Caraf. The UI displays the currently available features in Caraf, the feature version, whether the feature is installed or uninstalled, and an action to install or uninstall the feature. Each of this list can be sorted. A user can also add feature into the controller. When a feature is added, the UI automatically installs the feature on all the members of the cluster. 
For example, let's install sample number one into the controller. As you can see, it's been successfully uploaded. Let me refresh to, I can see the coffee maker provider sample being uploaded. And this sample will also get uploaded into the other members of the cluster. So let's look at the other members of the cluster. So now I am on uh, member 56. And if I refresh the features page, I can see the coffee maker provider feature. The OpenSDN controller supports two roles, admin and user role. An admin role has all privileges. A user role is not allowed to perform system management. An administrator can also add user under user management and specify his or her role. Under system monitoring, an administrator can look at the service status of all the nodes in the cluster. On each cluster, the administrator can further look into the status of the controller the system, the OVA, the SSH daemon, the NTP, the Apache web server, the log aggregator and the framework, Elasticsearch and Fume, and Matrix framework, which consists of Sinai, Collecti, and Cassandra. For each cluster member, the Matrix dashboard provides view of key system parameters like the CPU, memory, load, heap size, network usage, and free disk space. The logs dashboard allows administrators and developers to quickly and easily monitor and troubleshoot the cluster. The logs are consolidated from each cluster member. The logs can be sorted based on each of the fields, such as timestamp, the controller component, the message type, the cluster member, the log level, and the severity. Additional fields can be added or deleted uh, using the fields option. The logs can also be queried using the search bar. For example, if I wanted to query the logs with log level error, I can use the search bar and look at all the logs with the error. And when I click on e any of the log, I can look at the stack trace, which caused that error. Additional customized filtering options can be applied to the log for target debugging. For example, I can select the log from a specific source, such as the controller core, which gets added into the filtering option, and within the controller core, expand on a given type timeline by pinching the timeline. So now I have this log for this, this timeline viewed in the log messages. This completes the installation and the overview section. Enjoy playing with the OpenSDN controller.